Hello and welcome to Levant TV Headlines. Barack Obama and US lawmakers ratcheted up the pressure on the Islamic State, with the president declaring there was no hiding place for the jihadists. Iranian Foreign Minister Mohammad Javad Zarif has accused the United States of being obsessed with sanctions against his country on the eve of new bilateral talks on a nuclear deal. The Middle East Quartet of Peacemakers have joined calls for a quick start to the rebuilding of war-ravaged Gaza before the current truce with Israel ends in renewed violence. The United Nations envoy to Yemen, Jamal Banomar, landed in the rebel stronghold of Saad for talks with leader Abdul Malik Al-Houthi in a fresh effort to end the country's latest political crisis. A media rights group has urged Qatar to revoke sections of a new cybercrime law saying they threaten freedom of expression in the Gulf state. Now let's take a look at the top headlines in today's newspapers in the Middle East. Starting with the UAE, the Khalij Times reports that General Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed Al Nahyan, Crown Priest Prince of Abu Dhabi, said Egypt is the region's strategic linchpin and a safety valve for Arab countries and their peoples. The paper also reports that the campaign for Scotland's independence referendum went down to the wire yesterday, ahead of a knife-edge vote that will see, the, see Scotland either break away from the United Kingdom or gain sweeping new powers. From Lebanon, the Daily Star reports that Interior Minister Nuad Machnouk says Lebanon will fight terrorism without having to coordinate with the newly established international coalition to fight ISIS. The paper also reports that Kuwait has arrested several suspected members of ISIS and is monitoring dozens more under its commitment to the US-led international coalition against the jihadists. And the Egypt Independent reports that Qatar-based Muslim Brotherhood figures have assured that their departure from the kingdom came upon agreement with the Qatari authorities without pressure, after reports claimed that the Islamist figures supporting toppled President Mohamed Morsi were asked to leave the country. The paper also reports that the officer of Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu and the Israeli Counterterrorism Unit has warned citizens from travelling to certain destinations, including Sinai, during the Jewish holidays of next week because they pose a serious threat to Israelis. Now let's take a look at the top Middle East headlines from the UK papers. The Independent leads its Middle East news reporting that Muslim leaders and British imams have come together signing a letter urging the release of aid worker Alan Yehening. The paper quotes the letter saying the un-Islamic fanatics are not acting as Muslims but as the Prime Minister has said they are acting as monsters. The Guardian reports that security officials say Shia rebels have reached a suburb of Yemen's capital Sana'a where they are fighting Sunni militias and besieging a university run by one of the nation's best known Sunni radicals. The paper adds that the officials say the fighting in Shamlan has forced thousands to flee their homes but they have no word on casualties. And The Telegraph reports that Iranian Foreign Minister Mohammad Javad Zarif hit out against the Islamic State group as a dangerous phenomenon, but warned it could not be defeated by airstrikes. The paper says that Zarif accused other nations of having created a Frankenstein that has come to haunt its creators, adding that the Islamic militants cannot be eradicated through aerial bombardments, nor can they be contained. Now let's take a look at the top Middle East headlines in international papers. From Germany, the Deutsche Welle leads its Middle East section with an interview with Egyptian filmmaker and activist Omar Hamilton. The paper says Hamilton believes that though prominent Egyptian blogger Ali Abdel Fattah has been released on bail, freedom of expression in Egypt is at an all-time low. And finally, the International New York Times reports that the United States general who beat back Islamic extremists in Iraq in 2007 has suggested that the battle against Islamic State jihadis would only succeed with the use of ground forces. The paper says General Ray Odierno was careful not to specify that those ground troops had to be American, but he made clear that success would be dependent on the presence of forces from all of Iraq's sectarian groups. And for more updates, please visit levant.tv. Thanks for watching. Be sure to join us again tomorrow. Bye for now.